Uh, I'm no expert, but I could literally talk for hours and hours about my absolute favourite character of all time, Wonder Woman. The reason I wanted to do this video is because she's an absolutely great character who seems to get misrepresented a lot of the time and is misunderstood as well. She was created by William Moulton Morris in 1941, who was the inventor of the polygraph, aka the lie detector, which is clearly where the famous lasso of truth came from. He wanted to create a superhero who triumphed with love rather than fists and firepower, and his wife basically said, yeah, but can you make her a woman? And thus Wonder Woman was born. She first appeared in All-Star Comics issue 8 in 1941, and she first cover dated in Sensation Comics in 1942, which remained her main run during the Golden Age. Her powers and story and accessories changed a lot during the Gold, Silver and Bronze Age, which was kind of good because back in the Golden Age, whenever she was bound by a man, she lost her powers. So I think we're all a bit grateful that one got vetoed. If you want to start reading earlier Wonder Woman, I would personally recommend reading Gods and Mortals by George Perez, which was published in 1987. Uh, the era starting with Gods and Mortals is largely considered the classic origin of Wonder Woman. The Amazons, Wonder Woman's native race, were created by, from the souls of murdered and abused women. Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons, was the only one of the souls who was pregnant when she died, and therefore she has this craving to have a child. So she creates a child from clay and prays to the gods to give it life, which they do, and thus Diana of Themyscira is born. As well as giving the child life, the gods also bestow upon the baby gifts. Uh, Demeter gives her strength, Aphrodite gives her beauty and a loving heart, uh, Athena gives her wisdom, uh, Artemis gives her the eye of the hunter and affinity with beasts, and Hermes gives her speed and the power of flight, which basically remains to this day Wonder Woman's general power set. Raised by the Amazons, she secretly enters a competition to become the champion of the Amazons and become their emissary to man's world to spread their message of peace and diplomacy. In George Perez's run, when, once she arrives in Man's World, she actually can't speak English, which is a touch I quite like, and she befriends a professor who then teaches her English, and she goes around spreading her message. And George Perez actually shows her going around to schools and on television and becoming an icon and a, a peace figure internationally. Pretty much any of the stories between Gods and Mortals and Infinite Crisis are worth picking up. If you want to understand what's going on in the run post-Infinite Crisis, uh, there's one graphic novel I would recommend picking up, which is Superman's Sacrifice, which pretty much explains what's going on once you pick up Who Was Wonder Woman, the first uh, graphic novel in the post-Infinite Crisis era. Spoiler alert! In Superman's Sacrifice, Maxwell Lord is a villain who has taken control of Superman and is hellbent on destroying the world. Wonder Woman has him in her lasso of truth and asks him, how do I stop you? He says, you can, o you can only stop me by killing me. So she does. And that fucks everything up. After this event, and at the beginning of Who is Wonder Woman, she's still dealing with the fallout, both from the general public and her superhero companions, of having committed murder. post infinite Crisis, Wonder Woman actually takes back up the, her alter ego of Diana Prince, who is the human she pretends to be when she's not being Wonder Woman. And as Diana Prince, she goes to work in the Department of Meta-Human Affairs. And actually during this run, she is put under a spell by Cersei, one of her villains, that causes her to lose her powers whenever she's in the persona of Diana Prince. This run is actually one of my favourite Wonder Woman runs with amazing writing by Greg Rucka and Gail Simone and Jodie Picoult and lots and lots of people. The first graphic novel I ever picked up was Ends of the Earth, which is a part of the run by Gail Simone with amazing artwork by Bernard Chang. After that run was cancelled, sadly, there was an alternate universe Wonder Woman published, and then after that we come into the New 52. The New 52 Wonder Woman is being written by Brian Azzarello with art by Cliff Chiang. The origin has been altered slightly in that Wonder Woman is no longer a child born from clay and is actually the daughter of Zeus. The story has been focusing on the pantheon of the gods and her place in it, and has no correlation whatsoever to her portrayal in the Justice League series or the Superman Wonder Woman series and pretty much anything that happens in them isn't really relevant in her own run which is great which means you don't have to pick up anything else except the series itself. Uh, personally I am a huge fan of Cliff Chiang and I think his work on the Wonder Woman series is absolutely stunning. His redesigns of the Pantheon of Gods are amazing and if you know your stuff you might notice that his portrayal of war is actually based on Brian Azzarello. So if you'd rather pick up a comic that is closer to where things are being published these days, uh, I would really recommend picking up the New 52 Wonder Woman run. There's, I think there's about three collected editions out so far called uh, cool things like War and Blood and Guts. Unlike other characters, there are actually very few Wonder Woman one-shots or standalone graphic novels, but the few that are there really stand out, and I would highly recommend picking up the Hikatea which was published in 2002 
and was written by Greg Rucka a couple of years before he started writing his Wonder Woman run. If you see the cover, you can clearly see that in this comic, there are no holds barred. This is pure, unadulterated Wonder Woman badassery. It's a modern take on a Greek tragedy, which poses Wonder Woman against Batman and kind of herself and her own morals and ethics regarding oaths and her ideals of justice. And so if you're considering getting into Wonder Woman, I, that's actually where I would recommend you start, as you don't have to know anything about other characters or backstories. It's a pure take on her as a character. As I said, I could talk about Wonder Woman for hours and hours, but I think the main reason I love her as a character can be summed up in one quote from the comics. Don't kill if you can wound. Don't wound if you can subdue. Don't subdue if you can pacify. And don't raise your hand at all until you've first extended it. I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably gonna mention Wonder Woman in many, many other videos, um, but I hope that you found this helpful if you want to get started or just wanted to know a bit more about the character. And if you've got any questions or opinions, leave them in the comments below. We're... L Great. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? You can tell when I'm freestyling.